His check on stories we're following for you on Robin Hood Radio. An Armenian man faces vehicular manslaughter charges in the town of Washington crash, according to police. A 28-year-old Armenian man was arrested Wednesday in connection with that fatal crash in January. James M. Ruiz faces charges of first-degree vehicular manslaughter, a felony, and aggravated driving while intoxicated a misdemeanor. The Dutchess County District Attorney's Office and State Police requested an indictment to arrest Ruiz by grand jury. He was arraigned in Dutchess County Supreme Court before Judge Edward McLaughlin sent to Dutchess County Jail with a $50,000 bond or $100,000 bail. Some news out of North Canaan this week. A series of vehicle break-ins have been taking place in the northwest corner, according to Troop B Police. At Monday's meeting of the Board of Selectmen, Craig Whiting said a few occurred recently in his East Canaan neighborhood. Canaan resident State Trooper Robert Crisoni said there have been a rash of break-ins at many area towns, including Norfolk, Bark Hampstead, New Hartford, Goshen, Salisbury, and Sharon. He said it's hard to determine motive, but state police are trying to get leads. He advised anybody... At parks their car at night to remove their keys and valuables and lock the doors. Police also advise those with video cameras on their houses to park their vehicles in lighted areas and focus cameras on the cars so they can possibly get footage of an incident. Now, the North Canaan Board of Selectmen have accepted several resignations. Robert Norton stepped down as fire marshal and we were replaced by Robin Denny, his assistant. B.J. Kristen attended her resignation as social service director. She said she'll continue as long as needed to process renters' rebates. First Selectman Charles Parati said there are five applicants for the job and interviews will be starting soon. He hopes to have her successor named by the next meeting on September 14th. Patricia Vanicky submitted her resignation as interim director of AHA after school and summer camp program. She'll be taking a position at Housatonic Valley Regional High School in Falls Village. A financial service website has ranked Northwestern Connecticut Community College as the sixth best community college in the nation and number one in Connecticut. The recently released 2020 report by WalletHub evaluated more than 650 colleges across 18 key indicators for cost and quality. Findings are based on cost, educational outcomes, and career outcomes. In news out of Hartford, town and city clerks will be responsible for mailing out absentee ballots for the November 3rd election. Secretary of State Denise Merrow advised municipal clerks in a memo on Monday her office will not be using a direct mail company to provide any absentee ballots to voters, as happened in the August 11th primary elections. There were complaints and accusations leveled over the performance of Cathedral House in those primary contests. In Dutchess County, census workers began collecting responses door-to-door on August 11th. They'll be visiting households that have not responded to the questionnaire through the Internet or by phone or by mail. Originally, the census count was to be completed this month but was delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, the Census Bureau had to temporarily suspend all field operations. While the Census Bureau was working under an October 31st end date, it was recently announced the count will now end on September 30th making the census workers mission even more challenging local individuals employed as census workers carry a valid u.s department of commerce id badge with their photograph and an expiration date they wear masks and follow local public health guidelines having completed a virtual covid19 training on social distancing and other health and safety protocols census assistance is also available via telephone at 844-330-2020 in english or 844 844- Four four six eight two zero two zero for Spanish. The Poughkeepsie City School District will only offer remote learning when school resumes on September 10th. The superintendent confirmed that decision after a letter to the district parents on Wednesday morning. Quote, after careful and deliberate consideration and planning, it's been determined that most appropriate instructional delivery model to begin our school year will be a distance learning remote instruction. It went on to say this is not an easy decision, but know that it's made with the best interests of all our students, teachers, and staff and parents in mind. 
In a story out of the Berkshire Eagle, call it the case of the mysterious vanishing Eurasian water milfoil. For at least half a century, Stockbridge Bowl, the state-owned great pond, also known as Lake Makinac, has been bedeviled by those invasive weeds. A tug of war between the Stockbridge Bowl Association advocating an herbicide treatment to clear up the lake and the town's conservation commission, firmly opposed to chemical cures, yielded a surprising outcome this month. The weeds can't be found in large numbers. Foresight Land Services, on behalf of the town, commissioned a study on the status of invasive plants and of the rare snails that inhabit the shoreline and remain protected by the state. Flu vaccinations will be required for all students six months or older who attend a child care, preschool, and college in Massachusetts to reduce the possibility of a double whammy of respiratory illness during the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. That's from Massachusetts state health officials on Wednesday. Students must get influenza vaccine by December 31st, according to the Department of Public Health. There are exemptions, including for medical and religious reasons, as well as for homeschooled children and higher education students who are completely off campus and engaged in remote learning only. The Sheffield Historical Society will present an outdoor exhibit celebrating Mom Bet, the first slave to successfully sue for freedom. It runs from today through August 23rd from 11 to 4 on the Society grounds at 159 Main Street next to the Town Hall parking lot. The exhibit is free and open to the public and follows social distancing and mass guidelines. For more information, sheffieldhistory.org. Now, the 11th annual Mom Bet Walk to Freedom will be held on Sunday. Meet at the Ashley House 117. Cooper Hill Road, Ashley Falls at 9 a.m. Bring your mask and water bottle. The walk follows the four-mile path to Sheffield Town Green that Elizabeth Freeman took to file her suit for freedom from slavery. The walk is free, though event organizers encourage donating to the NAACP. Black Lives Matter signs are welcome. For more information, 413-429-6561. Jason Alexander, Patti Lapone, Tony Award winner Santonio Fontana, Michael McKeon, among dozens of actors who will do a stage reading to benefit the Barrington Stage Company in Pittsfield and the Actors Fund. Their performance of Judgment Day will be held on Saturday with a premiere at 7.30 and will be available for viewing for 96 hours through Tuesday, August 25th. To access Judgment Day on the web, go to barringtonstageco.org, make a $35 donation, click on the card for Judgment Day. Our business brief is underwritten by Morgans at the Interlaken, interlakenin.com. You'll also find them on Facebook and by Salisbury Bank, salisburybank.com. The Dow Jones Industrial Average will start off today at 27,739.73. The Nasdaq at 11,264.95. And the S&P 500 at 3,385.51. We'll take a look at that tri-state forecast that'll come your way in just a few moments.